Greetings, folks. This is Mason Weaver, and welcome back to another segment of Stay Right or Be Left. Eternity is a long time to be wrong. Lately, we've been hearing a whole lot about Ted Bundy. The, the nation seems to be fascinated by this gentleman's ability to convince young women to walk off with him. And today, we're going to actually interview and talk to a young lady who, as a preteen, was approached by Ted Bundy hurt her girlfriend as a preteen, and he was able to get them to consider for a second helping him, and her mindset saved her. So today I want to introduce Mitzi Erb. Welcome to the program. Thank you. And it's amazing, it's Thursday May, Ted Bundy killed dozens of women. Right. He convinced dozens of women to walk away with him. Uh, tell me about that. First, where did you grow up at? I grew up in uh, Issaquah, Washington which I think were one of his first victims in that state were from Lake Sammamish State Park, which is in Issaquah. Beautiful park. Yes, very nice. Very comfortable. Yes. Very surreal. Mm -hmm. Made you relax. Absolutely. That's why they go there. Yes. <laughs> They're not going to go to the junkyard. Right. They're not going to nope. go to the sewer. They're going to go where you're comfortable. So you and your girlfriend, your young girls, were you bad girls? Were you runaway? Were you drug addicts? Nope. We weren't. I wouldn't consider us bad girls. We probably were a little wild because we kind of did what we wanted to do at that time, but um, we didn't do drugs. We might have did a little drinking, um, but we were unsupervised a lot. Unsupervised a lot. Yes. So you had nobody around you most of the time, so you became independent on taking care of yourself. Sure. And you were 11, 12 years old? 12. 12 Over years old. 13. Yeah. Tell me about that day. Um, oh gosh, you know, Lake Sammamish State Park was a place where you would go and hang out. Um, it had a nice sandy beach on the lake. You had uh, also some little wooded area where you could, you know, trails you could ride your bike or just walk through. They had um, concession stands. It was kind of where you just went to hang out with your friends, um, mm. played music. Um, this where kids just, hung out. Yep, this is that's where they gathered. Yep. Yeah. So you saw this guy? Uh, Lori and I actually were, we were heading, I don't remember if we were getting a ride back with somebody, I, but I didn't, I wasn't feeling very well that day. And um, I had someone coming to look at a horse that I was trying to sell. Um, and we were just, just walking out of the sand near the concession area and a, a guy approached us, a good looking guy, his arm was in a cast, and he, I, I remember he said, hey, I need some help, uh, I, and I, this is going back in my memory, but I, I think he pointed over in the corner of the parking lot, which was way far away, a sailboat that he couldn't get the hitch because, you know, his arm was broke. And, um, you know, he, he just laid it on, he said, hey, just be uh, five minutes, could you come help me? Um, and. I think why I remembered this so well was when we said, hey, we really would normally, but we've got to go. We're really in a hurry to leave. And in that split second, it was like his eyes changed color. He, he just got so angry that we wouldn't instantly. even instantly, that we wouldn't help him. And I, by nature, I'm a very, I would do anything for anybody. I mean, I may have been kind of a, um, a little bit wild at that time, but I would have typically helped anybody. You would have gone and helped him. Absolutely, absolutely. I wouldn't even thought twice about it. And, um, but he got, that's what stuck in my mind was the fact that this person got so angry so quick and was like, whoa, sorry, dude. Um, and we left and, you know, you don't think too much about that until, um, oh gosh, it was maybe a year later, less than that, I saw his picture on the TV uh, wow. that they had arrested him and I called up my my girlfriend Lori who was with me that day and I'm just like wow oh my gosh that was Ted Bundy <laughs> she's like who and I go remember that guy and she's like oh my gosh so it was it was crazy did it ever dawn on you did it ever dawn on you here's a, a grown man asking young teenage girls to help over the sailboat it ever dawn on you to say go get a guy to help you no but you're the helper aren't you I am. You're the helper. Yes. Yes. Uh, you have young girls right now that that are running around the same age you were. What can you tell them? 
I would tell them number one to um, just say no. And again, but they're afraid ask, they're, going, they're not going to like me. They're well, like me. then you just have to say, so what? Who cares? Doesn't like you. It may save your life. And just be no. be aware of your surroundings. Well, your friend Lori had another, uh, not encounter with him, but the kind of where he was. She was on a path with a horse. Right. Right. She used to she used to ride her horse um, along the railroad tracks. In fact, I think that was where one of the bodies might have been found at a certain time. Uh, but she was at that park at Lake Samama State Park the same day the first girl went missing. Um, so she she says, you know, she had many different encounters. Uh, and, you know, who knows, it could have been her. Yeah, could have been really you. Really scary, could have been me, you know. And so I I guess somebody else had plans for me. You, you <laughs> have had a, an adventure, an encounter with a, a world class serial killer. He was good at getting young girls to walk off. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Very charming. Yeah, tell me about the charm. What made you so comfortable? Um, you didn't feel that there was any danger involved with going and helping somebody with their arm in a cast. How could you? So you didn't have tattoos or black leather. No, you didn't clean have the, cut. <laughs> Nice looking, right, nice looking. Speaking of accent. You know, you felt sorry for him. Yes. Uh, because his arm was in a cast and he needed help. But like you said, you know, had had I been a little bit more thoughtful about the situation, I would have said, uh, be glad to get, yeah. you know, a, a guy to come help yeah. you. But you don't think about that. If, if Call that, my grandpa. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Call my dad. Right. Call the guy in the concession stand. It's exactly. important. Exactly. So any advice you can, you can give these young ladies watching, you have escaped. And your girlfriend escaped. You yes. talked to her the day on the phone. You guys have a relationship. You got to be older. You got kids now. That could have changed instantly. Yeah, absolutely. What advice can you give these little young girls and guys that are so confident in their own self that they're willing to do anything with anybody at any time? I'd say, you know, um, just always think twice. Don't think that these types of things cannot happen to you because they can. They happen every day to unsuspecting nice people. Yeah, only nice people. Only nice Me people. folks don't go and don't do exactly. it. Exactly. So, you know, you just have to not care what anybody thinks. If you say no, um, say, I'll be glad to call somebody to come help you with this yeah. day and age. Everybody has self -worth. I want to thank you for, for sharing it with us today. I know that uh, it brings back memories. Oh, it does. And you have a daughter now yourself. Yes. And I'm sure you have shared that with her to yes. understand what's going on. Folks, this is Mason Weaver, and I want to tell you something. You're not that tough. You ladies are so afraid of hurting someone's feelings. You're so afraid of how they're going to react. You're so afraid of being mean. And they know that. They understand that emotions in you. They use it to get things out of you and get your emotions to go against your own, own interests and own knowledge. Stop worrying about hurting someone's feelings. Always deflect. To someone else. If someone asks you to do something, knock on your door. Can I come and make a phone call? No, you can't, but I'll be able to get the call for you, 911 for you. Matter of fact, I've done it already. If they stop you on the freeway and say, Can you help me get my car started? No, I'm a lady. I don't get out of my car for nobody. A gentleman will understand that. If they get angry like they did, like Ted Bundy did with her, if they get angry, that's telling you that you need to watch yourself. And as a woman, nine times out of ten, you are not powerful enough to stop that. You're not powerful enough to deflect that. Your only power is to avoid that. This is Mason Weaver. See you next time. Stay right or be left. Thank you.